Let's go. They me pull up in the bends. I don't wanna make friends, I just wanna make M's. See some try to trap me again and again, but I gotta break the cycle with my guys in the pen. Where I'm from, no one made it from his end. Except for my brothers doing eight and then said. You see us up, but we were down in the trench. The only thing we know is to make it and spend. And now we're making money. Life is looking lovely. She didn't want me then, but now she wanna come. Hey, what's up everyone? Tell for lava. Pull of inaka, malo lele, and aloha. To everyone tuning in, it's your Uso Sefa, it's your Toko Atu, and we are happy to be back. Uh, we have an awesome guest. I don't know, man, it's a privilege to have the Toko on board with us on this episode. Here with us, Let's ladies go. and gentlemen, Willis or Willisi. Hello, hello. What's up, Toko? What's up, Toko? What's up, Toko? Thanks for having me, brothers. All good, all good. It's our, it's our pleasure, bro. We've been waiting for this one. We've been waiting for this one. I was... Actually, quite nervous. Say, eh? I was quite yeah. nervous for this episode because I know, I know, Toko, you got a lot to say, bro. You got, you had a massive journey, bro. You had a massive journey, but welcome, bro. Uh, first of all, bro, we just want to say thank you so much for jumping on. It's an honor. But just let us know, bro, where are you now? I'm currently living in Cardiff, Wales, UK. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the, right in the middle of winter here. So, yeah. yeah, it's pretty cold, pretty cold, but, you know, probably been here five years now, so getting used to it slowly. Yo, this is how I know it's cold, bro. The Toko is wearing, like, Kathmandu, like, jackets inside his house. <laughs> bro, that's cold. Bro, you know we only see those type of jackets at Polyfest, bro. Uh, <laughs> nah, you know, it's, it's cold, but, you know, I'm, I'm still, like, living, like, you know, back in the days when yeah, I grew yeah. up, so not turning the heating on, yeah, and yeah, the, yeah. the gas bill might go up. So, <laughs> save but save still the money, like save the money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how's, yeah the, how's the life in, in Wales, bro? How's the life in Europe? That's okay, bro. Like, you know, we moved here in 2016, but yeah, um, it took a while to get used to it, really. Yeah, like, it, yeah it's, it's different here, it's different, like, um. And we sort of had to, even though, you know, we had kids, me and my wife had kids already, but we still felt um, safe in New Zealand. You know, we knew oh, yeah. everything and we, we still had our parents around and stuff. But then moving over here, had no family, no nothing. So we sort of yeah. really had to grow up a bit. So now yeah. it's all good. It's all good over here. Now we, we used to used to live here now, five years. Going. Yeah. So, yeah. Man, how, how old were you when you moved here, Docs? I was 26. Damn. Yeah. Sucks, man. Life. Yeah. What 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 are some of the stuff you miss about NZ? Like the food? Do you miss the food? Bro, I miss the food. Eh? Probably just two things: the food. Yeah. Probably like pies in the morning. Oh. And, and you know, a, a feed on a Sunday. Yeah. And and just family. That's that's oh. pretty much it, really. You know, you know, a- anything else you can. Yeah, yeah. Back at um, anything else you can sort of replicate it. You know, but. You know, it's the food and yes. and, and just fam- having family around. That's the main thing, really. Man, I know, I know. Back at um at high school, we used to have like combos. Like one of the things in the morning is like your breakfast is like pies and sausage rolls. We do combos and yeah. mags. Did you guys have like your go to bakery or your go to? Um, I think they were like restaurant stuff. Oh yeah, they're restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> Not like Catherine, but I was in the bakery. Nah, yeah. those guys do. Oh, eggs, Benny. Eh? <laughs> Anyway, nah, nah, it was like there was there was a you know the uh, there's the wave pools. Oh yeah, yeah. At, at Mag, so yeah, there was a little cafe there that they used to get these like lasagna bun things. But um, mm-hmm. bro, when I when I went to Mags, I didn't even had had any lunch. Like, like that. <laughs> yo, like I had I had like three younger brothers, so like you know the lunch money and yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. The, yeah, yeah. Them, so, you know, I used to go and you know some of the boys, um, one of the, one of the boys I was with at, at the Hurricanes, um, Yopu, Yopu, Yopu Aso. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I used to just scab with him. <laughs> <laughs> Have to. <laughs> nah, but let's, let, let's get I into mean, it, bro. Let's get into it. Yeah, bro, let's get into it. And um, thanks for, again, jumping on, Wallace. I really appreciate it. But um, we're going to uh, get right into it, Baron, and, and um, um, if you can tell us about how was your upbringing? Obviously, you mentioned um, your three younger brothers, um, how was family? How was that like? And and going through school, 
Um, obviously going to Mags. Uh, Mags is a really a great rugby school as well. How was that journey um, like for you, brother? And also just like the upbringing um, on your end. No, it was good, bro. Like um, I grew up in a little uh, neighborhood called Glenhaven. Um, yeah. Shin Blockhouse Bay there. Um, you know, it was a nice little neighborhood. Um, just me, my three younger brothers, my one older sister, my parents. Um, yeah, it was good, you know, just a typical, you know, Tongan family. Then my, my parents came over from Tonga and, you know, just grinding it out like, you know, like most of us probably could see our parents do. Yeah. Um, you know, I played I played uh, for Suburbs Rugby Club. That's my home club. You know, spider, spider life. Spider life. life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the president right here. The president. <laughs> I thought it was Marcico. <laughs> No, 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 no. He's a young kid. Oh, what about Lina <laughs> Luau? Hey? <laughs> I thought it was Lina Luau. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that guy. Bro. It's not the cover club. It's the cover club. I think, um, I think Langi took over from you. Or was that what that? Langi? Nah, Langi was already professional, but he's too professional. <laughs> Spider Life was created from like just the boys working nine to five and yes, sir. To play club. Yeah, that's <laughs> double, that's double. But um now nah, yeah, you know, suburbs was my home club. Um yeah, just, just a normal family. Like um my my um my mom was pretty strict. Like she she really wouldn't hardly would let us go anywhere. We don't we weren't that type of family to like go places or sleep at your friend's house or yeah. Sometimes not even at my cousin's house because, like, I don't know, my mom just wanted to keep us home. Yeah. Um, but my dad was sort of different. Like, he was out and about, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, he 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 took care of what he needed to take care of. You know, had his job, paid his bills and stuff. But you know, he was uh, he liked to enjoy a beer or two on a Friday after work and stuff like that. So you know, it was just that was our our normal life. But um, one one thing he you guys keep saying as I went to the mags, but I started off at Avondale College for three years. You're a spider, spider, eh? Yeah. Yeah. I started off there. My my sister was um, was at Avondale, um, my older sister. So, you know, as as the next boy, um, well, the, um, had to, you know, go for it. Like, you know, just that, yeah, that yeah, typical yeah, island, yeah. island style, you yeah. know, like had to go like... Like even little things like if my sister stayed home and my parents somewhere, I had to stay home over yeah, things yeah. like that. So she went there and I I didn't get a choice of where I want could go yeah. in high school. So um yeah, I had to go to Avondale and uh third form, fourth form, fifth form, I was there. You mean yeah. What made the change, bro? Um it was a mixture of things. Um yeah. in the end of my fifth form, yeah, my I, I was, I, you know, I was getting caught up in the in, in the naughty side of things, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like my first form year, you know, when you do your, I don't know, what it's called now, NC, NCA. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, I think I turned up to one exam. <laughs> <laughs> That's the uh, majority of custom boys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I was hanging out with Lord the Kelsey Boys. You were like, nah, I got to get out of West Auckland. Eh? <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, it was a majority of things like, um, you know, that side of things, you know, I was getting caught up in doing other things mm. outside of school. And and then also my um, my younger brother was playing for Suburbs at the time and his, his coach was a uh, uh, deputy principal at Max. Yeah, and he he his, his um his team at suburbs they had like gone undefeated for like three years. That's that's Ghana and them. Yeah, mm, mm, mm. and so he he wanted to get as much as he could, um, like over to Max, uh, as many boys as he could. So he, my little brother was one of them. Um, so you know my 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 well first my 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 parents sent me to Australia first. They they wanted me to go yeah. and live with my auntie. <laughs> you know, usually usually you know they you send your kids back to Tonga. But yeah. um <laughs> you in the opposite today. Eh? Yeah. You into paradise. Yeah. 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 My, 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 mom, my mom was like, because I'm a mama's boy, so yeah. my mom's like, oh, she she felt bad if she sent me to Tonga. Like she she didn't want me, like she knows what life is like there. Yeah, so yeah. Was like I, I want to punish him, but I don't want to punish him too much. Yeah. 
So they sent me to Australia. I, I live with my auntie and my um, my uh, my grandma's sister um, living there. But yeah, they they just couldn't control me. I probably went got worse over there. <laughs> so um, they had to send me back. My mom got me back home, and then it was just in time for enrollments um, mm. at Mag. Wow. So I thought, why not? Yeah. Um, and then there was a. a a coach that you know that that's probably guided me as a as a kid. His name is Ramsey Tomokino. Mm, nice. Um, he was um, I first met him as a, in the Auckland under fourteens as a rep coach. So he, he was our coach, and he's probably just been um, you know just monitoring my my, my rugby at club mm. and and, at, and when I was at Avondale. So um, he was a sevens coach there. So he sort of put in a word. Yeah, and then um, but but I know my. Um, my brother's coach, who the, who's the deputy principal at the time, he was a bit sketchy. Like, he was like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I don't yeah, know. I've seen him. I've seen him come to the games on the sidelines. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, <a> dodgy. <laughs> you know, starting fights with the other families and the other team. And, stuff like that. and like, this is like under 10s, under 11s. Yeah. Um, but now, um, yeah, they, they brought me in and bro, I had this massive mullet and it was blonde. Oh, no. <laughs> any any chances of bringing it back? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, like, nah. My wife cut it. Hey, your wife will cut it. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but um, yeah, I had this massive mullet, and I had to go meet the principal and and do all this stuff. Um, and um, he said, "We'll we'll give you a chance," you know. On the basis your your brother's coming to the school, but mm. you gotta cut the hair, shave the beard, oh, and everything. And it's like, and like I just had this attitude, eh? Like I thought yeah, I was yeah, the man. Yeah. I was yeah. like, nah. And I just walked out. <laughs> Next minute, turn up Monday, army haircut. <laughs> <laughs> I was my mom over the week and I was like, Matt, you're going to this school. <laughs> Yo. Got the old army haircut turned up to school. And, yeah, the rest was history, yeah. Nice, bro. Yeah. Um, like growing up also in like um obviously you've mentioned your brothers and, and I've kind of um come across them also through through my journey. Um what was it like with, with like just with the younger boys at home? Like did you feel like you had a, a a big expectation on your shoulders or were you just like, you know what, let's just be boys and you know but like what was that like at home growing up then was it always competitive i know that the younger two were a bit more younger than you um then um than you but like what was that kind of um relationship like at home um, we're, we're we're close real close like mm. growing up younger like real yeah. younger like growing up maybe towards 10 11 it wasn't until like and and these are the one of the things one of the things I regret. Like it wasn't until I I started going to high school at Avondale. I sort of started losing a relationship, you know, with my younger brother, especially the one under yeah. me. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It was just like we sort of grew apart. I just started doing my own thing, really. Um, you know, yeah. I was hardly home. I was hardly you know, I'll, you know, I'll turn up to his games and stuff. But like, just that old bond that we used to have. I sort of, you know, I sort of. And this was on me. Like I just thought of like I was the man. I was getting old. I was turning into a you know a young man, and mm-hmm. like he was still young. And you know you yeah. can't do the stuff I'm doing. You know stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, over the last you know ten years or so, like you know we've, we've gone back to you know we're both men. Oh. We've both got families. Even my my two younger brothers. You know we all got we all got kids. So um, we we're real real tight now. Like really tight. But, um, you know, there was a period there where, like, it, w- it was all on me. Like, I just sort of drifted off into my own little world. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and it's one of those things I wish, you know, I, I hung around and got to to see them, you know, go, th- go through their teenage phase. Because, you know, I, I, I had a daughter when I was 17. Um, yeah. You know, when I was at Mags, I was 7'4". Mm-hmm. Had a daughter and then sort of I just disappeared from there for, yeah. for a bit, you know, like. And, you know, my two younger brothers were coming through those teen years, and I, I, I feel like I look back and I, I don't even know what what happened. Like, yeah, yeah. any memories from from it? So, those are one of the things I, I sort of regret, you know. But you know, I'm, I'm making up for it. You know, like we, yeah, we always yeah. catch up when I'm at home, and cool, we're man. always talking on uh, on Zoom and stuff. So, yeah, uh, it's all good. But 
no, nah, we were real tight back then, man. Like, used to do it. But, you know, it's uh, we don't have those relationships where we, like, really talk and open up and stuff like that, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. sort of like... Just the... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless, unless we, like, unless we've had a few beers and then... Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Dogs, I love you, eh, dog? <laughs> <laughs> but now, nah, like, it's one of those just real, like, you know, relationships. It's just, yeah, like, yeah. one or two words and... Yo. But it's just it's just all, all in the look and the face and stuff. Yeah, like, we just sort of get it from my dad. You know, my dad doesn't speak a lot too. So yeah, like he, it, it's, it, it would seem to um, other people that we don't have a relationship with our dad, but we know what it is. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, it's all love. Yes, sir. Hey, bro. Thanks for sharing on that, bro. And, and shout out to the Hollow uh, Brothers, man. Um, Lorna, Sam, and, and Dylan as well. Like, you know, bro, I, 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 I hated too. seeing those guys on the field, bro. Oh, so I know they were gonna give me a hard time, but honestly, oh. bro, it's like, You're a machine. but like, um, was rugby always in your picture, though? Like, was it? Um, did you always know at a young age, or and like, even there, and also at Mags, like, yo, bro, I'm gonna give. This is gonna be my career, or like, did it just like did it just fall into place with 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 your journey? Um. Nah, so I think I think from from when I picked up a ball, bro, it was always rugby. Eh? Like, yeah, from the very beginning, yeah. and like probably like up until now, I still think I'm hopeless at everything else. <laughs> like I can't, I, I'm I can't do anything. Like I've tried all these other things. I've played all these other sports. It's, it's like I just I just can't find it in me to like you know to play it or enjoy it. So. Nah, it's always been yeah. rugby. I just feel like I, I'm just born to play rugby, really. So, mm. um, yeah, it's always been that since since I picked it up, like like age of four or five. Yeah, that's that's mean, bro. Um, you see it now, like you know, with uh, first fifteen rugby in New Zealand, and even just around the world, like it's it's starting to look professional now. You know, with TV games and. <laughs> Uh, and stuff like that. What was the, you know, in your days playing first 15 uh, with uh, Megs, what's the biggest difference you see now with the, how the game is playing with first 15 these days, high school rugby to when you were playing high school rugby? Um, like you said, bro, probably probably how it's, how it's te- televised and yeah. how, how you can get access to it so easily now. Yo. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, like back in our days, like, if, if if you weren't in the grounds, you you know you wouldn't know about it or care about it really. Yeah. But um, nowadays, you know, can you can access it, watch on TV. It could be on the internet, highlights on the internet and on Facebook yeah. and all that. So, I think that's that's the biggest difference. Um, yeah, for me, that's that's pretty much it. Yeah, really, yeah, yeah. Um, I can't really see because like, I I don't I haven't really caught any of the mm. of the of the of the matches. You know, like mm. when, when I. Other than when I play, like I, I don't really watch rugby. Like I just try to switch off. Yeah, yeah. Because um, you, know, you know, like I got, I got four daughters. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I used to come home and watch rugby, and they'd be like, rugby, 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 rugby. rugby. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd be Yo, like, all right, all right, all right, all right. So, all right. Come on, yeah. let's play with the Barbie dolls then. <laughs> <laughs> nah, yeah, that's, that's that's pretty much the only difference I I can really. Use see that stands up that's awesome bro um you played uh, in a a few uh in club rugby as well um what's your what's your favorite memory in club rugby because i know you know there's a massive difference between club rugby well I, i'm not sure but you can you, you can you can say it. but like in suburbs you know with with club rugby you get to play with the boys you know you get to play with your friends and stuff like that like what was your one of your favorite memories playing in that um club jersey or suburbs um I probably got two. Yo. Um, Yo. One of them is like back when I was um, 14, 13, 14, I played in um, suburbs under 15. And bro, our team was just made up of made up of a team of like just boys from the streets. Yeah. Like just, just boys on the streets that we would meet at the race course and, Yo. you know, we'd just, you Run know, just play for fun. <laughs> yeah. We just, just play for fun. And then there was this, um, this, this Samoan um, fella, uh, Pat Stowers, that, you know, sort of 
you know, he was like, why not? No, I just took on, he just took on the job of coaching the under-15s. And mm. I was going to, I was going to sign up anyway. And there was a few other boys, but then there were other boys that were like, ah, like, like you could see the talent. They could play some rugby there, but they were, you know, they were, weren't really yeah. interested. And, yeah. But you could see it. They were just normal boys from the neighborhood in Avondale. Um, and, and that year we just, we just had fun, man. We had some mm. big boys and, you know, we were winning games and, you know, lots of like I always message the boys and we always talk about the memories and, and one of them is like before games the there was a like a sort of a ritual that Pat Styles would do and we yep. just but we're sitting around like 40 minutes and stretch just like it will be like those <laughs> yoga stretches eh? and we just laugh and just be like hey, what were we doing back then and like, all these little big like these big island boys like doing all these stretches for ages like the other team other teams warming up and we're just like lying on the ground with like our legs in the air and all that. And I'm like, so what are we up to? But, it's not a good picture, yeah. boys. Yeah, we ended up winning that that year. Like yo, we got to the final. Yo, we yo, ended up up. winning, so it was it was a it was it was a good feeling. And you know, we were all at Emdale College at the time, and we ended up winning the um, under 15s minor side as well, yeah. the league. Yes, sir. The same oh. group of boys. So um, it was a good year for for us. You know, just. I don't know, it just sort of gave us a little bit of hope. Like, yeah, you know, we'll come up to school and enjoy it, like talk about, yes. you know, the game and all that. But that would be one. And probably my, my most recent one was when I was at Suburbs in 2011 or 12. I can't remember. But, um, you know, um, you know, we had to play our arch rivals, Watermatter. Ah, uh, ah. Battle of West yeah. Auckland, is it? Yeah, the Battle <laughs> of the West. And we went down there and, Man, there was a big crowd on the on the far side on that little yeah. that little hill there. Yeah, they, were yeah, yeah, yeah. they were getting into us, man, and we're getting into us, and we won. We ended up winning yeah. the, the, but we hadn't won in a while. So you know, what yeah. matter had had the trophy for a while, and to win that um, win that back, and I think it was just before I, I, I left for for ITM Cup. So um, mm. yeah, to win that back, it was a good feeling, and then. You know, we all uh, all turned around at that big crowd yelling at us, and we bowed. We bowed to them, and we're like, "Thank you, bye." <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> was good. Bro. It was, um, yeah, yeah, I love that club, man. Man, yeah. Uh, again, bro, shout out to um all our, our club rugby's in in, in NZ, and even all around the world. Thank you for um influencing the young ones, and then even the 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 local players. You know, shout out to all the coaches that actually care for the players too, and that um kind of mentor them not only on the field but off the field too oh. you guys and shout out to suburbs too eh? yeah and shout out to say spider life spider life <laughs> <laughs> sorry bro we're, we're we're from ponies eh? so I'll, I'll, we'll give suburbs some limelight today ah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> sorry <toho. laughs> right the pony though <laughs> well we wrapping up the podcast now <laughs> Ah, uh, you're swearing at me. <laughs> nah, fine. We're from Whitech. Oh. 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 <laughs> nah, it's okay. Um, and you played, you know, you played against and with uh, family, with your brothers, um, with, with Stags. How was that, getting to share the field uh, with, with, with family? Because, you know, not many, not many, not many people could say that they, they shared the field with their brothers and, in, in, in some platform or some field, but how was that feeling for you guys as, you know, as, as uh, a family? I think like, no matter, like I've, I've achieved a lot already mm. um, to date. Um, but I think that's the highlights of, of my career really. Like, yeah. you know, you don't get that chance often, you know, there's, there, there are, you know, brothers out there, they get to do it, but, mm. um, you know, for us, you know, just to put a, that proud feeling and, and your mum and dad, you know, that's yeah. that's all you oh. could have asked for. So now it was an awesome feeling, man. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed, you know, playing my brother, you know. Um, you know, hopefully, you know, my two younger brothers have always wanted to play with me. So yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Man. I told him, you know, like, you know, hope maybe I'll come back and play club and come back and yeah. play the suburbs and we can play. But Yo. um right now, Sam, you're a bit overweight. <laughs> 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 nah, nah, yeah, that's yeah. it, man. Yeah, bro. <laughs> See, uh, so now we got to get nah. Sam on to get it to tell his side of the story, Docs. <laughs> uh, his story is just about vortexing. So, um, yeah. 
Let's go. That's how I'm man. It was a good feeling, bro. Like, yeah, yeah. And I enjoyed it, man. Enjoyed it. That's awesome, bro. Um, Seki, and hopefully one day we get to see all the Hello Hollow boys on, on one field. Uh, hopefully, hey, spider um, life, man. You never know, spider life. Um, in, two, in 2015, uh, you, you, you were in the Hurricanes, you know, you got into yeah. the squad with the, with, with the Wellington Hurricanes. And in 2016, uh, you guys won their championship. You know, talk us through your experience uh, within Super Rugby uh, with, with, with the Canes. <laughs> um, it was a rocky one bro it was yeah. a rocky one you know like um, you know I think probably only the boys that were there in that mm. year those couple years would testify to this but um, yeah it was it was tough you know my I think 2015 was where I really learned that like talent will only get you so far you know what I mean mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. like um, you know, playing playing ITM Cup, playing playing club rugby, I probably just got away with, you know, my, my talent just just got away with, you know, getting through playing rugby. But as soon as I, I got to that next level, I realised, you know, I, I had to put on way more work than than I have been. Um, you know, everything, like the, the training, the the recovery, the, you know, every, every little thing, the nutrition, mm-hmm. I had to step it up. So... Um, yeah, I had, I had just been getting away with it, you know, just getting my, my talent was just getting me through, you know, getting through me through these games at ITM Cup level. But as soon as I got up there, um, but you know, I, I, 2015, I, I had, I had offers to, to go to other um, Super Rugby teams, and and you know, I, I knew that going to the Hurricanes, I wasn't going to play that year. Yeah. You know, we had Ma'anonu, Conrad Smith, mm. and um, Ray Lilo, who's with me now here at the yeah. Cardiff. At Cardiff. So um, I knew I wasn't going to play, but I, I just sort of made that decision to to go there and learn. Mm. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, I sort of like wanted to go and sacrifice a year of not playing and just and just learn. And because, you know, I'm a late, late bloomer, you know, like mm. 25 years old, debuting at, at Super Rugby is, you know, quite old and in and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. the rugby terms for, for, for a New Zealander, you know, yeah. the latest would be like 23, maybe 22, but, you know, you sort of get identified at a young age these days. Yeah. So, yeah, um, yeah, I, I just knew straight away I was going to be, you know, putting on a bib every, every training game and holding tackle <laughs> bags. Yeah. So, um, but, you know, it was probably one of the best decisions for my career. You know, I, lear- I learned a lot. Uh, not not only of you know in terms of rugby, but a, a lot about myself and and and, and realised you know I was still struggling with you know with demons you know what I mean mm. yeah um, you know when I went down to Southland and, and played ITM Cup I sort of got a grasp on it but um, you know I, out of high school you know I struggled massively with alcohol <clears throat> alcohol abuse and and you know. And just drinking a lot of alcohol and and you know doing a bit of drugs and and all that type of stuff and I don't know I feel like you know when I signed in 2015 with the Hurricanes knowing that I wasn't going to get a game get game time it sort of took a toll on me and it, the pressure like of like not playing and just training mm-hmm. and training and training you know sort of started to resort back to old habits and you mm-hmm. know just because you know. When you train during the week, you look forward to playing on a Saturday, you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. not playing on a Saturday, like I wanted something to look forward to. So like, you know, when I wasn't playing, I started to drink drink heavily again on the weekend. Like it was almost like looking forward to something to do on a weekend because yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't playing. Um, so yeah, that sort of crept up on me and, you know, got, got in a little bit of trouble in-house, you know, mm-hmm. within the within the, the club. But, um, you know, the, the boys there really helped me out and, um, yeah, I got really close with Ma'a that year yeah. and he sort of guided me along through that year. We were unfortunate when we didn't win um, mm. in the final against the Highlanders, but, you know, it was a great learning year. And, yeah, the, the, the second year I knew I had to come back and, and just redeem myself and take mm. all the learnings I learned from the year before, you know, remembering that I sacrificed a year of playing um, just to learn and, and mm. knowing that Ma'a and Conrad were going to leave that year. Yeah. Um, I was going to try and just make a name for myself the following year. But, you know, um, the beginning, like before they named it, you know, a bit of politics got involved, you know, mm. like yep. I, I was the other year, year before. I probably, 
you know, didn't make a good name for myself, but I was I was still playing good rugby um, at yeah. ITM Cup level. I felt, and a lot of people felt that I was still playing well for Southland and deserved a, another contract um, at the Canes. But you know, there were you know the politics of it all. There's mm. it's a business, and mm. um, they ended up signing me on a wider squad, which is like, you know, it's it's for up and comers and yeah, yeah, you know, for kids that are still in uni and and the academies coming from there, but. I, like I had two kids by then, and yeah. and, and white water squad um, pay probably wasn't enough to help me feed my family really. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, like I said, yeah. those contracts are for like academy kids that could live together and they could all pay rent for an apartment and and all yeah. that, or like just someone that's got no kids and stuff like that. But you know, I, I was a different situation, and yeah, I just felt like hard done by there. And then because they they had signed Nani. Mm. Mm. who um, came from the Warriors um, and they had signed Peter Aki. So, um, yeah, I just felt like, oh, you know, it was, a, it was a tough, it was tough for me, but I was like just still willing to, to put the work in. And, you know, I had a good preseason there, yeah. I had a good preseason and, you know, I felt like I should have been, should have been playing. Because mm-hmm. like, um, I felt I felt like Nani was still learning the game, you know, had, had five mm. years of the Warriors Mm. playing league and you know I, I felt like I could have you know I've been playing ITM well and, and I was here mm. last year I know I know the system I know everything and yeah I don't know I probably just me and the head coach clashed a bit yeah in, in terms of like you know my my off-field behavior last season so mm. you know that didn't help me at all so but you know I, I, I kept my head down man I keep my head down I keep I keep working and you know um when I got the opportunity and you know, I took it you know I came on and I played well off the bench and then they gave me a start and then he got injured and we went over to Sydney, played the Waratahs and yeah, I held onto the jersey since. So yeah, man. yeah, it was it was a good one. But you know, like I probably there probably would have been a chance of, of staying in, in Z if yeah. I hadn't had that little like uncertainty. Like, you know, I I'd done a good preseason, I played well in the preseason games and still wasn't, you know, starting for um for the Canes that year and and then Cardiff came calling. And so I was like, yeah, yeah. yeah. They came with a three year contract. And then, you know, if, if, if the Canes had, like, if I had started and stuff, I probably would have just turned it down. Yeah. And I would have just carried on, like, playing for the Canes. But, you know, I, I just felt like, oh, you know, I, I'm doing everything I can here. I still can't get a break, can't get a yeah. you know, deep shot, give me a start or, you know, something like that. So I was just like, you know, they offered a three year contract. And I was like, uh, it's time to, you know, like I, I got here already. You know, it's time to, to think about my family and, you know, just oh. mm. just lock in a contract where I don't have to worry each end of the season about playing for another contract. So, you yeah. know, a good three years is a good stability. And I just signed it early and, and got it done. And then when I signed it, then I started starting and, and playing well. And I was like, ah, yes, <laughs> we made it. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but I was like, you know, there was probably a, a little chance there. I could have like turned back on 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 my country on, on my contract here in Cardiff, but I, I was just like, nah, I got to be a man of my word and just yeah, well, hundred, just and just stick to it and and, and go enjoy it. And you know, I'm, I'm happy that we um we won ended up winning Super Rugby for the yeah, first yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I think won it for the first time in 2016, and you know, I was involved for, um for you know the build up into that final. So yeah, played in that final. So and I was happy like um I got to do it with a a good really good good mate of mine uh, Michael Fats yes, oh. mm-hmm. and uh, yeah that's my boy you know we you know he came into Max for 15 at fifth form and I was seventh form so you know I've uh, yeah. you know, like been a big brother to him since but he's um, oh. bigger than me now so yeah. <laughs> now <Nah, laughs> man, man so, our doc's like you know we, we were talking about it before but this is you know exactly why we we love doing this podcast you know this is is, is your these type of stories you know because i know it takes a lot for not only athletes but men to speak up about you know the you know the the the, the bumpy times of the journey um but the fact that you just you know share that with us and and all our viewers we really want to commend you with that because that it takes a lot for 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 someone like an athlete or even for for some men to kind of share their their downfalls and and, and learning and learning times but Man, we really do want to honor that. We really, we really yeah, appreciate you sharing that because I know that's something big in your heart too. Um, but thank yeah. you, Docs. It's yeah, it's a pleasure to, yeah, like, to hear that. Look, like um, 
I, I got lots of brothers, you know, I played yeah. with, you know, you know, quite a few from Calston as well. Um, yeah. And a lot of them around Auckland that I, yeah. I feel like are better rugby players than a lot of the players I've played with in the professional, you know, scene. You know, it's just, you know, they've, you know, struggled and gone through a lot of the things that I yeah. sort of overcome, you know, and yeah. I just wish that they could have, you know, kept that like with me. I, I wish I could have took them with me, you know, like a lot yeah. of the brothers that, I play with and they know who they are. Um, mm. So, you know, I just, you know, want to see the next generation, you know, just mm. learn from this and, and you know, know that you can, you know, like not everyone's going to be an all black, you know what I mean? So, yeah. but there's yeah. other avenues, there's other ways like to achieve your goals. Like, mm. you know, like I, I thought I was going to gun to be an all black at a young age, but I, I knew that I wasn't going to get there. So, you know, now I'm an international for Wales and yes, sir. You know, oh, that's that? another way to to tick off your goals and and you know, oh, that no. you can, mm. can get there. So, yeah, this is Woo-hoo. like for me, it's almost like you know, showing us poly boys that you can you don't always have, like, of course, aim to be an all black and all that, but there's there are other avenues to, to reach. Yeah. yeah, speak, bro. That's awesome, bro. Thanks for that, man. Um, we'll touch on um, cut off blues, bro. Um, yeah. you know, you 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 got over there with um. And you're playing good footy over there. How was that like? What's the culture there? Um, what was your first thought when you got to training? Like the environment, the culture, like was it a massive surprise to you? Was it a massive shock to you? How was that like, bro? bro yeah, when I got here, it was different, man. Like, um, first of all, like I, I couldn't understand what they said. Like the accent was so, <laughs> was, was real thick. Like, <laughs> The way they spoke, like, so when they're like, you know, when you're in the game and you're in the heat of the moment, you're like talking fast. Like, I, I have no idea what they're saying to me. Yeah. So I was just going with the flow. But yeah, the culture is different. Yeah, man. Like, you know, like back in New Zealand, there's still that, that, um, you still get that vibe of like, you know, who's older and who's a senior member. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. but you know, it's, over here, it's, it's, it's a bit different, you know, like you could get young boys saying whatever to the older boys and <laughs> like that. Like, I, like I wouldn't even, I, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't dare say anything to like Ma yeah, like yeah, the, yeah. or anything like that. Like, you know, like it's sort of like the way we grew up, you know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Old, oldest and, you know, the respect the elders and all that. But it's a bit different here. Like, <laughs> These young boys are pretty ruthless. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> like, like uh, they just want to get caught slipping somewhere. Eh? Like, <laughs> so I'm just like, nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, good, you're good. Oh, good. Yeah, I'll catch you later. <laughs> yeah, I'll catch you in town too. <laughs> nah, but um, yeah, it's, the culture's different here, but. They're, they're a real good bunch of boys. Like, um, I guess we, like us poly boys or us overseas players, just had to get used to them and they had to get used to us, really, and, mm. and the way we are and the way we talk and laugh and all that. But, um, yeah, we've been here five years and we're pretty much part of the family now, part mm. of the furniture. So, um, nah, yeah, I love it, yeah. That's awesome, bro. And um, you had a stint with, um, with the European Rugby uh, Challenge Cup champs. In 2018, can you talk us uh, through that, brother? It was good, bro. It was good. Like that year, we went through a lot of, a lot of crap, man. Like, like little <laughs> things. Oh, yeah. As a team, you know, like we went through a lot of things, but I felt like that made us stronger as a team. Yeah. Um, you know, even like we had a trip to South Africa that year, and there was a sham, bro. Like. You know, boys were losing bags and flights were delayed for like <laughs> flights were being delayed for like two days and 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 all that type of stuff and it was just like oh but you know I felt like it sort of made us a bit closer and you, know, you could tell on the field and yeah you know we were winning games and winning games and then we got to the challenge cup and um final was in Spain. Um and that was good bro we, bro half time we were down by twenty points. Ooh. And then um, we just came out second half and we were just like all or nothing. So we just threw it all in the bag and ended up winning with the last last minute penalty um, to win yeah. the game. Yeah, it was good. It's a good feeling to 
it was nice to get that feeling again. Um, you know, Yo. from Super Rugby. Um, you know, it's like you sort of get addicted to winning. Yeah, <laughs> like, I was just gonna say, man. Like, what's next? <laughs> like, like when, like the first, my first taste of winning is like I said back in under 15s Yeah, like that nine side and for suburbs, and then you know I went to Mags and we won, won the Auckland champs there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then went to the Canes, and then now Challenge Cup. Um, yeah, you sort of get addicted to that feeling, really. Like, yeah, yeah. you just, you just, what you just want it. So, yeah. no, nah, it was good, bro. It was really good. Jeez, shot bar, congrats on the, uh, <laughs> on that championship, man. Uh, but man, number one one six five. Yeah, you know, that that number will ring through your your mind for for quite a long time now. Your yeah. your Wales debut, you know, yeah. like. I know your family and, and friends and, you know, probably the whole of Tonga, bro. And even, you know, because um, even here and because I'm here in Hawaii and, you know, even hearing that news that you made the, the Welsh team, like, man, that, that, that must have been a, a moment. Again, you know, first of all, congratulations Yo, on, on, on the all. cap, bro. That's, that's such an awesome feeling to you know just watch one of our, our poly brothers yeah. uh break through that you know we know that you know shout out to uh Falito as well that kind of paved that that you know that sort of road but you know you coming from New Zealand you know yeah. and, and and you said it before now that kids in high school see another avenue that is not you know just the all blacks you know there's other avenues that they can go to and you're one of the the brothers that that paved that way so congrats but talk us through that bro talk us through that day putting on the jersey or getting the phone call that you're, you're Yo. starting or you're putting on that jersey. It's not the red uh, Tonga jersey, but, you know, it's even, you know, it's, it's all good. Same, 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 <laughs> same, 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 red jersey. Same, same, how, same. how was that feeling, Docs? Bro, it was good, man. Like, um, obviously, you know, like I said before, I, I signed for three years, but um, that was on the basis that I would be eligible for Wales. Yeah. Um, so that that came on my contract, my three year contract, because um, you know, like they didn't want to sign an overseas player um, blocking, you know, any Welsh players from playing for yeah. Wales, like playing for Cardiff. So if if they were to bring me over, I might as well, um, you know, be eligible for Wales. So um, you know, I, I came and I uh, put in the work for three years, and in 2019, I actually got called up to play my first game mm. um, against yeah. Barbarians. And um, I got I got named on the Wednesday, and I did my ACL on the Saturday. So I was out for nine months. So I missed I missed a year. Yeah. I missed a year of of you know opportunity playing for Wales. Um, and I was gutted, bro. That was probably like this is my first major injury really in my career, and mm. you know, something I went through mentally um, was tough because um, it was in the middle of the lo- uh, in the middle of lockdown too. So yeah. Um, you know, it was tough on, on my wife having to look after the kids and I couldn't walk around and like looking after me. So um, it was tough, really tough, but, you know, got through it, you know, just uh, my parents came, came over and, and, and we spent Christmas here. So it was good, but um, oh, me. Yeah, awesome. it was, it was good, bro. It was good, man. Like I, um, I had just come back from injury and I had only played um, two games, but they had already named their squad. Mm. They already named yeah. their squad for Six Nations. Oh, yeah. um, but I, I knew I wasn't going to be a part of it because I hadn't played enough you know I had only played a couple games so and then they played Ireland and had quite a few injuries and then I was watching I was like ooh might be, <laughs> <laughs> might be opportunity Chances. Might be opportunity here. but at the same time I was like I was like I hope they don't call me like because I felt like I wasn't match ready like yeah. to play that level yeah. like I, I needed like another two three games but I had yeah. only played two yeah. games so coming from like what like um, maybe 11 months out wow. you know yeah. of no rugby and to only play two games I, I knew I couldn't step up to international rugby really yeah. um, and I was like I can't I hope they don't call and then um, you know went training that week it was a Thursday we were training um, I was training for Cardiff just training, doing backs units, and then coach calls me. He's like, "Get off the field!" And I was like, "Oh, <laughs> I thought I was in trouble." I was trying to think. Oh, what, what did I, I do? What did I do? I was like, I knew I shouldn't stop running red lights. <laughs> 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 they caught 
me now. But um, <laughs> but um, yeah, he called me over and he was like, "Get changed, you gotta go." Um, Wales had called you up, oh. and I was like, I just froze up. I was like, "Honestly, who, bro?" Yeah. Like you, know, like you know how I said, um, like I wasn't ready. Yeah. That's when I like hit, really hit me. I was like, "Flip, I'm not ready." You got no choice. <laughs> and I was like, and it's a Thursday. And it's a Thursday, and the game is on Saturday. I was like, wow. what? So I went, went sort of coaching. I was like, shh. <laughs> um, and then um, it was a Thursday. They called me in, um, and the coach just said, you know, we've had a few injuries, and we're just like, we're playing Scotland this week, and you just thought, you know, why not call you up and see see what you got? <laughs> I was like, bro, these guys are me up to fail, bro. <laughs> Honestly, I was like, these guys sitting first. Like, firstly, they know I've only played two games. Yeah. Like, they know that's not enough game time from like 11 months out. And then they call me up on a Thursday. Wow. I was like, oh, yeah, these guys, eh? And I was like, that's sweet. And I just came, did one training, captain's run, and then boom, we're off to Scotland. Bro, I was like, yeah, I'm facts. <laughs> but it was like, it was, it was, it was scary, bro. Like, I, I didn't even know like a lot of the boys there, especially like the senior ones. Yeah. Like that's that's all I I like. At, first of all, that's all I really wanted was like the respect of the of the boys. Mm. Mm. And because like, you know there was there's there's a lot of talk, you know, like when I when I made Wales and. Like, you know, am I here for the right reasons? Yeah, and yeah. Blah, blah, blah. And like, I just wanted to make sure I show the boys, first of all, like the mm. boys in the team. I don't care about any of the noise outside or even I don't care about the coaches. Like, I just wanted to show the boys I'm going on the field with that that day that, you know, I'm I'm willing to give them my all with them. Mm. Like, I'm I'm here. Um, I'm in it just as much as they are. So, yeah. especially for the senior boys, you know, I wanted to earn their respect and, Mm. You know they've they've played a hundred odd caps for, for Wales and you know that yeah. that's a lot to them. And I just wanted to show you know I can I can play just as much or like play like I've I've played that much. So um, yeah, it was it was it was scary, bro. Like I got there, it was snowing. <laughs> bro. I was like, could, you could yeah. you could you could ask for a bit of weather, eh? That was it. I, I was like, got there, like on, on the plane, I'm looking out the window snowing <laughs> then I'm looking back at my phone and trying to go through the moves I'm like <laughs> these guys are setting me up <laughs> they, know the set up played, they know I've never played in snow before <laughs> <laughs> I was like bro and I was like oh yeah sweet we got there bro. and then um, I was like oh but I've only been I've only trained once so like they won't chuck me on unless it's an emergency yeah. next minute like 25 minutes into it, the fullback <laughs> gets concussed. Do another setup, bro. Or another setup. I was like, Shanna, you're not even concussed. Just stay on. <laughs> bro, I was just like, oh. and then like, but they could have, they could have put our um, our our other back on, who's mm. a who's a ten, and they mm. could have put our ten at fullback. Uh, nah, they're just nah. setting me up, bro. <laughs> They were like, oh, we, we heard you're a bit unfit. Yeah, have 60 minutes. <laughs> oh, right, right. Did you go on there as fullback or were you in the midfield? Nah, I ended up... This is a reshuffle. A wing, a wing went to fullback and one of our centres went to the wing and then I went into to 12. I went into oh. second five. So, yeah, I think I, I think um, probably wasn't fast enough for the wing. <laughs> probably like, probably with the, with the snow, I wouldn't be able to catch any high balls. So, nice. uh, I was happy to go in there, but now it was, it was good, bro. Like when I got on, I just, I just remembered, like you know, like speaking to my mom the night before, you know, just go out there and smile, have fun, you know. Mm. Just plus, I felt like it was it was good. Like there was no expectations. Mm. Yeah, you know, yeah. I only had one training. Yeah, I was like, I was like, well, oh, what what do they expect from me? Like I've I've only been in once. Like I can't mm. do, you know, everything right, but. I was happy as my debut. You know, came in and just played like me, you know, like getting the ball wide to our wingers. And I think that's our job as centers just to create space and 
put our wingers in, in, in space. So, you know, I felt like I'd done that. And, uh, we got lucky, you know, we got, we ended up stopping a, a try that they could have won. So, um, yeah, but I was happy as with that debut. And, yeah, I haven't looked back since. So, that's nah, so, been Togo, good. Let's go. Mean, mean, mean. Thanks, Togo. And, um, um, bro, like, I, when you're explaining that, like, I was like, oh, what worse can you, like, how bad can it get, eh? Like, yeah. getting caught up last minute, uh, just had two games, snowy, yeah. um, 25 yeah. minutes into the game. Like, but like, like you said, like, I, I watched that highlight, bro, and you embraced the moment that was probably what stood out. Um, yeah. like you explaining it and then like kind of remembering back to that, to, to, to your debut, like, you really yeah. embraced it, which was yeah. which was good. And I think it's great for our younger generations coming up. Like when you're put under pressure um, and it's like almost like that saying, like pressure makes diamonds, right? You go and embrace it, go and take your two hands right, and enjoy yeah. it. And once yeah. you enjoy yeah. it, bro, you'll be sweet. But, um, yeah. but, but they should make sharing, a documentary, bro. bro. Documentary <laughs> called The Setup That Went Wrong, Docs. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, fact, Get up there, uh, field. <laughs> well, that's good, bro. Um, a few more questions, bro, and then we'll get into our quick fire. Um, what's what's it what's what's next for Wallace Salaholo? Um, look, bro, I got I got um after the season, I got I got one more year on my contract at Cardiff. So, um, you know, I I, I feel like you know. If I retired, um, I'd be happy with my career and like Yo. knowing that you know it started at the age of twenty five. Um, I've I've packed in a lot in, in six years. Um, you know I've done a lot in six years and I, I'll be happy with it. My parents would be happy with it, but there'll probably be still be that one part missing, and that's the World Cup. So Yo, well. um, I think I'll, I I want to try and tick that off. You know. Yeah. Um, before I, you know, I, I retire whenever that is. But as long as I, I, you know, I can retire knowing that I, I've been a part of a World Cup, um, I'll be happy. So, yeah, that's that's next for me. Just just gunning to to get a spot in in the Wales team. You know, um, Six Nations in a few weeks. So I think yeah. they named the team in a couple of weeks. So um, yeah. you know, just trying to play my best here at Cardiff and. Um, yeah, try and try and be involved in, in every campaign um, for Wales to to put my hand up for a um, squad selection for the World Cup in twenty twenty three. So yeah, so next year. That's stick up, bro, and um, all the best, bro. All the best for that. Um, last question before we get into our um, quick fire, Dago. Advice for um, let's say eighteen year old Willis Halaholo. If you could tell eighteen year old Willis Halaholo something, bro, what would it be? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fighting you. Yeah, bro, I am going to follow that guy. <laughs> uh, nah, uh, 18 year old. Um, uh, it's simple, really. Like, like out of high school at 18. I, I I made the academy, Auckland Academy, right? Mm. Um, I actually I actually turned down to go to the Storm Melbourne Storm Twenties. Yeah, Oof, I imagine that. Yeah, I was meant to go there, but when I made it into schools, um, I, I decided to turn it down and then just just pursue rugby because you know rugby was my game. Mm. But you know when I made academy, um, bro, I I took I took it for granted. Today, eh? like I I just didn't realize what I had at the time. Mm-hmm. So like if I was to tell myself, man, just be grateful, you know, yeah. be grateful for, for the opportunities you get. Because like I said, like when I made Academy, like they had everything for me, training, everything. They they even paid for like my schooling, a course that I could do. Oh, and it cost a lot of money. And I I I hardly turned up. You know, like yeah. I, I was I was ungrateful. But you know those my priorities were all over the place, you know, having a, having a baby at 17. So, um, yeah, that's sort of where, where I went off the rail. So, yeah, I, I just tell myself to be grateful. Listen to mum and dad. Yes, sir. <laughs> that's, that's the number one. Like, yeah. I was always respectful to mum and dad and all that, but, you know, I never listened there. I never, <laughs> I just be doing my own thing. Um, and just, and the last one is stay home. 
<laughs> I need a some I need a someone to whisper in my ear. <laughs> there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, to everyone that's watching this, all our viewers, three awesome advice for you. Be grateful. Listen to mom and dad. And stay home. <laughs> Stay home, docs. <laughs> Stay home. Stay home <laughs> Appreciate it, docs. So uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna move on to our quick fire. We got five quick fire questions for you. We shoot this out to all of our guests at the end of our podcast. So here you go. There's the last question that we always that it's been the same through with all our guests. So hopefully we'll see what you have in the last and the fifth one. But your first one is your first quick fire question is in your rugby career, who is your messiest roomie? Messi has ruined me. Uh, uh, I'll be honest, I'm the messy one. <laughs> I'm going to throw myself under the bus. <laughs> yeah, like, because uh, I, I, like, I've, I've roomed with a lot of boys, but they've all been pretty clean. Like, they, yeah. they clean their minds. <laughs> I think it's just, yeah, I don't know. I had three younger brothers, they were clean up for me. Yeah. I just be like, yeah, they clean yeah. that. Oh yeah, you know fair I mean? enough. Fair enough. Oh, we'll, we'll switch it. We'll switch it then. Who's who's one of your favorite rubies? Um, my my mate over here that plays with me at Cardiff, Ray Ray Lilo. Oh yo, yo, Hurricanes, yeah. yeah. Ray Lilo. He's a good roomie. He's annoying sometimes, but um, <laughs> yeah, he's a good roomie. Him and him and Matt Anon, <laughs> him and Matt Anon was the yeah. yeah Matt was he's a clean freak, bro. Oh. Like I, I couldn't even be messy in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He'll get angry at me. So. Yeah. Those are two good roomies. Yes, sir. Shout out to the boys. Nice, nice. Um, your second nice. one. Two two things, not people, two things you can't live without. Things. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Tough one, eh? Give me a example of someone else's thing. Um, now, you're the first one who's got this question, but you can say, like, your phone. Oh. Can you live without yeah, your phone? phone? Headphones, music, I mean, Netflix, uh, rugby boots. <laughs> um, nah, my air fryer. Rugby, rugby your air fryer. <laughs> Oh, nah, nah, bro. you, yeah, G. Bin, bro. <laughs> that's a tin in the bin for you, bro. What a easy game, you bro. Can cook anything, bro. Just chuck Yo. it in there and get yeah, right. <laughs> that's yeah, right. Now nah, you're yeah, right. Yo, um, so your third question, dog. Um, you're stuck on an island. Yeah. And you get to choose one brother. It's gonna help you survive on that <laughs> island. Just one. So either Sam, Lona, or Dylan. Um. And why? And why? Why do you choose them? So you're stuck on an island, bro, and you're needing one of them to help you survive. So skills comes into this, bro. <laughs> Definitely not Sam. <laughs> because he. He doesn't listen. And when you tell him something to do, he takes ages. <laughs> um, and he's bots. Um, not Lona, because there's nothing inside that skull. <laughs> uh, probably probably not. Probably Dylan. Oh, Yo. that's cool. Sweet. Yeah, a bit more yeah, hands good. Yeah. Good man, good man, um, good man. Your fourth one, what's your go-to takeaway meal? Takeaway? Yeah. Like fast food restaurant. Fast food. Um, man. I um can it be from NZ too? Anywhere, anywhere, Docs. Yeah. Um I like Wendy's eh? Ooh. Yeah, mushroom burger, eh? Yeah, I like Wendy's, but I like Green Jade's chicken. Oh, oh yo. <laughs> Is that fuck? <laughs> hey? Yo, Green Jade's, hey. man. 
Carlos Green Jay and Evan Dale. Let's go. Yeah. Get like six drumsticks for a dollar. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hands down, Doxy. Happy days. Hands down, Doxy. Yeah, G. That happy days for sure. Sucks, man. Ah, good. That was a good one. That was a good one. Uh, and your last one, your last one. Uh, your top five guests that you'd love to spend, let's say, dinner with and one night with, just to sit down on the table, have dinner with. So your top five um, that are still, that are living or that have passed on. Anyone. Could be a celebrity. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Uh, we've had some pretty good, good ones, bro. Yeah, we've had some good ones. Good type of questions, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Um... Tupac. You got that. So that's uh one there. Um there's another one. I think I want to bring um Jonah. Eh? Yo. Jonah Lobby. Oh yeah. Oh, I thought it was yo. Jonah Jonah Takaloa, but we'll go <laughs> Jonah. <laughs> Turn along, turn Let's go. Yeah, turn along, Tupac. Come on, let's mix it up. Uh, yeah, up. Got us for a female in there. Uh, yeah. I think I'll add what I to because I just watched um that um. I just watched that, um, what's that movie? King Richard. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'll invite yeah, one of them. Yeah. Serena. Oh, Serena. Yeah. Venus. Do you want the goat or Venus? Nah, the goat. Yo. Serena. Yeah. Yeah, because nah, she was no. ruthless. Yeah. Yo. Yeah. Um, so that's what, three? Oh, yeah, that's three. That's Two more. Good, that's a good pick there, bro. That's Very good, good pick there. Yeah, those two, Puck. Um, I, th- I think I need to get um, Dave Chappelle. <laughs> bit of entertainment. Yes, sir. Of, you know, lining up the... Yeah, lining, lining up, up the, the night. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, lining it up. So that one and then um, one more. One more. Yeah, bro. One more. Finish it off, bro. It's been fire right now. Oh, flip, I don't know. I think I just, I just have to invite my late grandma. Hey. Passed away, you know, a few years, years, years ago, but yeah, bring her back from the dead and have a good dinner. Yeah. There bro, that's yeah. pretty good, bro. That's, that, a, that's a pretty, that's some pretty good, that's a pretty good table, bro, that we've had so far. Mean, mean. Shout out to all ladies, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, that the man himself, Willis Salaholo. Uh, thank you so much, Togo, for being a part of this episode on this podcast. We do want to wish you all the best for this next year. We can't Good wait time. to watch you in the World Cup and even uh, this year's rugby. Can't wait to, to see all the success that's about to come. We appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Sele's podcast is your also Sefa. It's your Togo Atu, ladies and gentlemen. Willis, Salaholo. Say less. Thank you, Now we will, now we will.